right, so today we have a special guest here with us today. Today we have Denise McCormick. In a little bit, she will introduce herself and provide some massive value. Denise, thank you so much for being here with me today. I mean, Denise is amazing. I connected with her from the Jack Canfield group, and I just love her teaching. I love her energy, and I love her book, <laughs> a Woman Who Impacts. And she is certainly a woman who, who impacts who impacts the people uh, around her and her communities. Thank you so much, Denise, for being here with us. Thank you, Cassie, so much for asking me to do this. Um, Cassie is, has not said this, but uh, I connected, as Cassie said, on Jack Canfield, and I uh, connected with her, having her as my business coach, because I'm doing so many things in business, and as she said, I was a 26 year educator that redirected to entrepreneurship. So there were a lot of things I needed to learn that I had never experienced. So she has just been phenomenal as my business coach to steer me in directions and help me with the technology um, because um, I taught a lesson on this, feel the fear and do it anyway. I was of the age where technology was not in my high school. It was not at home when my daughters were home because it just all came after. So I basically had to be self-taught and then seek out other people to learn all of those things. So um, I'm thrilled to be here, Cassie. Thank you. Well, thank you. So um, you mentioned that you're an educator, and I, I know you're an incredible educator. You worked in the education industry for a long time. So tell us more about yourself and how do you become an incredible coach that you are today? Kathy showed um, my book. Um, the first time I actually wrote about my journey was in that book. And it was called From Surviving to Thriving. And I believe that every educator deserves to thrive in life. And I am telling you from my experiences and now from the book that I'm writing right now called Women Who Shine, which is the same publisher, Kate Butler. I'm a featured author this time and I'll be a keynote speaker around that too. Um, I was not supported the way I felt educators deserve to be supported. I mean, I had a master's degree and a K-12 reading specialist and I just felt like there was nothing there for self-care. There was nothing there for personal development. And here we are taking care of 25 kids, their social, emotional, um, academic things all day long. And who was taking care of us? We didn't have time to. So I went on a journey after uh, my educational career to become the educator's coach. Um, I said, well, I got a master's degree in education. Now I'm going to get a master's degree in personal growth. And I became a Canfield trainer. I have been to three of Jack's Breakthrough to Success events. Um, I um, studied with Mary Morrissey for a year for the Brave Thinking Masters, which is all about neuroscience and how we can program our minds to do what we want to do, to have our dreams come true. And um, I just became certified in, as a licensed Worldwide Woman Speak um, Circle Leader. And that's going to be something new I'm going to be adding to help women find the brilliance in their own voices. So I was silenced for quite a few years. So I just felt like it's time that women learn that their voices are important and their self-care is important and their personal growth helps every single person they come in contact with. So I think it's a new day. Um, I think our, our whole culture is moving towards this. And you know from leaving the corporate world, the same type of thing, that personal development, and Cassie has, has helped me so much with mine along the avenue of money because you know we don't realize we all have limiting beliefs around money. We do. And we don't know till we start getting an awareness around it, what they are, why they are, and how to change it. So um, my husband is uh, 45 years. We celebrate that on June 26th. And we have two grown daughters, uh, one with four grandchildren in Australia. She's a pediatrician. He's an OBGYN surgeon. 
And our other daughter is out with one granddaughter. Um, her husband's a portrait artist, and she is a human resource development uh, manager in Denver. So, you know, I know I use these things with my own children. I used them with every single student I had, and I thought, you know what? I planted seeds all my life. I'm going to write about that. I'm going to speak about that. And I'm going to write children's books to help children learn how to do that. So that's kind of the, the path I'm on right now. Yeah. So Cassie, how did you get from corporate to doing what you're doing? Great. Thank you. And first of all, I just want to say I, I'm inspired by you every day with all the activities that you're doing. And that's amazing. I love that you said master in personal growth because a lot of the personal development lessons we don't really learn at our school so it's amazing that we have coaches like you to teach us those strategies that we can use to develop personally um so how i became a financial coach so i was a uh, first vice president at a major bank i work in the financial industry for 15 years um, and just a couple of years ago, I decided to step down from my corporate job and help small businesses and individuals to turn around their finances using the skill set that I have learned from my corporate job. And the reason is that I made major financial mistakes early on in my 20s. I made, I made major purchases that was because of my ego versus you know, thinking if it was in alignment with my value or thinking about if that allocation would help me to which my financial goal in the future. But I was not, not really thinking that. And I made a lot of financial mistakes. Even I was working in the financial industry. So I made it my personal goal to really help people because a couple of years ago, I, I, I was thinking, you know, what can I do to create more impact? And I know staying in my corporate job alone would not would not create direct impact to help people. So I decided to create a more direct impact, create courses and work with people one-on-one -on -one to help them achieve their financial goals. And it's been amazing. And now I'm still working on commercial contract uh, full time, but I'm still helping people and coaching clients uh, while working on my commercial contracts. It's just been amazing. But more importantly, I'm a mom. Um, so I'm actually helping two children, um, four and seven, and they know all about money concepts. And especially my daughter, she knows how to allocate her money. <laughs> she, she is a 50 spender, like she saves her money. Um, but I, we've been teaching her the concept of money and it's, it's incredible watching them grow and how they can you know, teach them the concept of how do you grow your money? How do you save your money? How do you spend your money? It's being great. Like I said, when I met Cassie, I knew she was the right person to work with because she offered so much value to a, a group of us in, in, the, in the Jack Canfield thing. And, and I thought, you know, that's the person I want to connect with. If she's so, I could tell her heart was, was into being of service to others. And that's what it takes to be a good coach. Um, you, you have to really have fertile listening, be able to really listen and know what um, people are needing, and then be able to provide that for them in such a way that they feel comfortable. And I just felt that immediately with Cassie, and I just have enjoyed everything I've learned, and she has been so helpful. I wouldn't be at the point I'm at right at this point without her help. And that's what's really neat. A lot of people think entrepreneurship is solo. It's not. It's, it's people helping people. And we are all like-minded that way because we know the value of helping other people um, because empowered women empower other women. And, I, you know, I just love connecting with women that are like that. Um, there's no competition. There's no judgment. There's just value, and it's really exciting. That's amazing. And I have to say the same about you, that you provide so much value. I just attended your workshop, Never Mind the Monkey Mind. First off, love the name, super catchy. I think that's amazing. But what you taught in the workshop was incredible, and it was just simple strategies. 
I mean, it's not that hard to change your mindset. And well, it, it is hard if you don't have strategy, but you share simple strategies that work. So share with us about that. Okay, well, what we don't realize is our brain in our, is so amazing. Um, we, our five senses are taking in everything around us. We have between 60 and 70 thoughts every single day. And I don't think people realize that that's the amount that we're dealing with. So we have to be aware is, I know those thoughts are coming into my mind. How do I want to deal with those thoughts? Because 80% of those thoughts are negative. Wow. Because our reptilian brain is always trying to keep us safe. Okay. That's just the way we're programmed so we can survive. If we want to get to thrive, we have to overstep that. And it's only our awareness that oversteps it. negative. And 90% are the same thoughts I had yesterday. I have to have some practices in my life that change that. I have a one second rule to change a negative thought. When it comes into my mind, do you know what I say? What do delete. You mean? I say, I do not give that thought any time in my mind. <laughs> it's a I boom. love it. No time in my mind. <laughs> and that strategy so, works because just by saying the word delete. Because mm -hmm. you know, you can see a visual thing. When you delete something on your computer, it's gone. It has no power. It, it's not on your visual scope any longer. So, and if somebody likes the word cancel better, or, you know, it, it, that's fine. Um, but that's a pretty simple, and I just wanted people to think about that. Um, when good thoughts come in, you can press enter, let them in, because those are the thoughts that will sustain you and, and keep you moving forward towards your goals. I so love that's it. that's the simple stat strategy. I love it. And when you put the visual too, like, to actually see the delete button and like just delete that thought and see the thought leaving is so powerful. <laughs> so powerful. It is. It is. And I love the fact that you mentioned like 60 to 70,000 thoughts. That's a lot of thoughts. And 80% of our And imagine all those thoughts coming in your body every day and if we don't clear it. I mean, if we will bring judgmental impact long term not just on our emotional health but i'm pretty sure on our physical stress well i it's just started re i just started reading um i'm in a mastermind group for six months with jack canfield and patty aubrey and jocelyn mast and and uh, one of our speakers was john Asaraf, and he is a neuroscience specialist and of course anything that was my because when I did my master's degree, it was around Howard Gardner's from Harvard, his multiple intelligences and all the ways we're intelligent. And I'll have that uh, an educator's guide with some activities when I, when I do my book, Never Mind the Monkey Mind, that will be coming out later this year. But he has some exercises you can do for your brain to strengthen it so that you can keep more positive thoughts in your mind. Because I think people tend to knock themselves down because they have these negative. When you learn that that's just the way we're programmed, then you can go, oh, so that's not my fault. Doesn't, I'm not a bad person because I have those thoughts. I have those thoughts because that's my protection. That's my armor. That's what's there to protect me. But I don't need that armor right now. I can take that off by saying delete, and I can do some exercises to make my brain stronger, my, my thinking more positive. And then I can get my goals done because people beat themselves up when they don't make their goals. And they just need to understand what's keeping them and it's not their fault. I love it. I love that. And it's such great explanation. We do tend to beat ourselves up for our negative thoughts. So having this strategy on how to delete that thought as well as understanding why and knowing that it's normal that's very very helpful well cassie i i really have enjoyed your workshops on becoming debt free what are some of the strategies you use to help people 
to, to realize this dream that they think they can never get to? Oh, thank you. So first off, it's actually easier than you think. Um, but there are steps. There are steps and there are work, you know. And, and if you're willing to put in the work, you can get to financial freedom and it's a lot easier than you think. But I'm going to reveal three steps today. So number one step is to change your mindset. We need to get to the root of problem because it's not that people don't know what they need to do. They know, like they know they need to spend less money. They know they need to save more money. They know they can't get in debt, but they don't do it. And mainly it's because they don't know the root cause. They don't know what causes it. So finding out that root cause would really solve a lot of it. It's probably 80% of that. So number one thing is know that if you want different results, you're going to have to have different mindset. Hi, now, what is that trigger? You and I both have trigger. So mine might be, you know, usually the need to feel appreciated. So I might spend more money on gifts or spend money on uh, buying stuff for my kids when I really don't need the stuff. But know that trigger, right? Like, and, and some people, their, their trigger might be self-love or might be, uh, peace or whatever that is, whatever that brings them that emotion that they crave every day, you need to schedule some time to get that craving. So one way to find out what that craving is, is look at your credit card payment. When was the last time you bought something that you didn't need, right? Or when was the last time you went on money speed? Were you on stress? Were you dealing with a stress, stressful project? Did you just get in an argument with your husband? What was that event that triggered that spending? What was that emotion? And think, think about some of those purchases that you made that you on stuff that you didn't need. What was that emotion you were trying to crave? And now you want to schedule every day, schedule maybe like even 15 minutes to get that emotion without spending that money. So finding the root cause, know that you can actually do that. The second step you want to do is allocating your money appropriately. You want to have a budget that is in line with your value, in line with your priorities. Know what you need to spend on and buy the stuff that you only need to buy. So there are three questions that my clients would use to decide if they should you know, make a purchase or if they should set aside money for that. Number one is, do I need it? Do I need it? And if you think you need it, ask why. Right? Like, do you just simply need it? You know, is, is that feeding your ego or is that really truly fulfilling that value and priority that you need? So no, do I need it? And number two, do I need it now? Is it something that I need now or is something like three to six months from now? Right? If it's three to six months from now, do you need to set up side money for that or do you have to buy that now? And number three, and this is probably the most important question and it will save you a lot of money is, what are the lower cost alternatives? So a lot of people think like, oh, I'm going to have to invest in expensive personal training equipment or hire multiple personal trainers and multiple gyms because I, you know, I want to have like an Instagram body. But what are the alternatives? You know, do you even go to the gym like enough to justify the membership? Can you just pay each time when you go or, you know, rent versus buy do you have to own your second home can you just you know rent you know if you're only going like maybe once a year so think about doing some of those cost analysis and see if there are cheaper alternatives and then the other part of the allocation is make sure that you are not spending everything that you earn and that's why effective budget is really important that you pay yourself first and then the third step is Making your money work. Know where you should put your money in your in the right investment based on your personal tol risk tolerance. Because you and I have different risk tolerance. Like my husband and I have different risk tolerance. He's like go big or go home kind of guy, and I'm like, no, this is good. <laughs> like, we have very different risk tolerance, so we need to put money work for us to maximize our return based on our risk tolerance and maximize your earning as well. So that's why I work with businesses to maximize their profit.
you know, how could they change their cost structure and their, their pricing structure to maximize their profit? So you have more money coming in, yet you are having expense control with your budgeting and then growing your money and optimizing your return. That will help you get to your financial growth. Well, I, I wanted you to, to come on the educator's edge because I felt as an educator, financial advice and awareness was going to be so helpful because I, I'm really blessed. I have a husband that's very tuned into this. And I think that's one of the reasons we made it through the farm crisis is because of, of his ability to delay gratification, to set budgets, to know what was needed when and to do it. Um, so we set up for me as an educator, I paid myself first. I had money go out towards a fund. And, you know, now that I'm um, retired from that, um, I have that money sitting there for when I need it, for what we decide to do with it. And what it, uh, could you tell me how you think it could help educators to have what you have to offer? Absolutely. I think it will help educators in a great way because especially educators are usually really giving people, they like to give a lot of value. They give value every day. Um, but oftentimes they're not taking care of themselves. So I see a lot of uh, educator coaches because they give so much, they think of themselves last and oftentimes they take shortcuts. And that's when, that, that's when they don't realize the the importance that they have to pay themselves first. They have to have the delayed gratification. They need to schedule time to take care of themselves and take care of their own self-care. So then they are not uh, trying to take shortcut by, you know, and the shortcut can be eating, overeating, it could be drinking, it could be drugs, or it could be just spending, you know, swiping your credit card. And so we are really trying to figure out, you know, a system that we can um, first identify the root cause. What caused it? You know, what is that emotional craving that you need? And then set, getting your budget, getting your budget set up in a way that you allocate your money to which your goal. And then knowing what your goals are too, because you and I have different lifestyles. So maybe I can retire in two years and other people might have to work 30 years to retire if they live that lifestyle so knowing where are they going based on what they do now do an assessment then we direct them like you do how you we direct their mindset i reach direct their mindset on money to get to their financial freedom quicker oh that sounds wonderful i just i just really feel like there's so many things that educators can do that really give them a sense of stability and I think they need that now more than ever with every all the changes that have come about with the the pandemic so um, I you know knowing what how it helped me I just wanted to bring Cassie on and show others how it it could help you in whatever um, job you have in life. It, it's just really kind of, in, it's just a basic. And, and I remember my daughter saying, how come there's not more in school about this? And I said, well, I think there should be, but you know, kids aren't in school all that much time. I always had this one thing um, with parents where I showed them that they're only actually in the classroom 13% of the time till they're 18 with all the other things that go on in the school day. So once they realize that, I said, you know, parents are their child's first and most important teachers. And so if the parents learn about it, and a lot of educators are parents too, um, then they can help their children and then they can help the children in the classrooms. Cause I always had a thing called wants and needs in my classroom and we differentiated what's a want and what's a need because and I always did it around Christmas time because I knew some kids weren't going to get what other kids were going to get. So I just wanted to make that known uh, so that kids could have something to, um, you know, sort of glean it. Uh, around when other kids talked about all the things they got and they they could say to themselves well I really didn't need that I wouldn't need that so you know it's um 
it's really just all about educating yourself. I love that, that you educate them, the need and versus want. So then when they think about their own personal finance, when they grow up, that they remember that lesson. So I, I love, I mean, our teachers truly have so much impact on our lives. We don't realize that until sometimes. Yeah. In the so thank you so much for all that you do. I know you provide so much value. So tell us what are you currently working on besides this wonderful book? I know you have more books coming. So tell us more about that. And what are you? I do. I do have a book coming that I, I think is really going to be a great starting point for um, um, students and their, and their caregivers. It's called Never Mind the Monkey Mind, and it's around mindset. It's around the negative thoughts that we have. And I, I have a little boy, and he is struggling with the negative thoughts that he's having in his mind. So he asked his mom about it and she assures him that, you know, she has those same things too. And then they have a discussion around what he can do about that. And I, and then it ends with a song because I'm a songwriter and and a singer. And because I knew kids weren't going to say positive affirmations, you know, after you do the delete, you need to say something positive to yourself. Um, and so I knew they could sing it because I always taught all my subjects to, to music in my classroom. If you wanted to have something cemented in the mind of a child, you did it through music. And that's why they use music for all the commercials. So we remember things. But anyway, um, so this little this book is coming out uh, with my publisher, Kate Butler, soon. And I'm really, really excited. It's called, um, it, it's in the I Am series. And so I will be using the success principles of Jack Canfield. All the things I thought maybe kids didn't get taught in school, I would put in those books. And then hopefully down the road, I want to do a curriculum around that. So, yeah. So that's what I'm working on. I love it. I love it. And earlier I talked about um, providing value for the educators. I love to offer my free courses for your um educators in your group as well um, so my group is called oh, get free family um, it offers free courses free workshop um, it, it, it has different topics from budgeting to how do you save more money or if you're a business owner how do you maximize your cash flow and I've done nine training sessions in that group so far and I continue to add on those workshops so um, it's called Death Free Family. I'll be happy to post the link. So um, oh, if you are interested in learning. Awesome. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. I, and I have viewed Cassie's trainings and they are excellent. And folks, this is free. I mean, it is, it's going to be invaluable. And it's summertime. That's why I brought her on. It's summertime. You have a little more time to focus on some of the things that you need to do for you. And so... Um, I, I will post the link on uh, uh, Educator's Edge and, and really um, encourage you to take a look at these courses and watch it with your family. Yeah. And you can talk about it. Absolutely. And I want to share your group as well because I love the workshop that you did last time, Never Mind the Monkey Mind. And I know you continue to add value to the group. It's a very active group too, I have to say. Can you tell us more about yeah. that? Well, I started it on my birthday, which was February 1st, and I had taken a virtual um, Dream Builder Live with Mary Morrissey that weekend, and it's all about your dreams, and I'd always had a dream of supporting educators in all the things that I felt was missing for me, and so I tried to put things on there and conversations with people, interviews with wonderful people like Cassie and authors that have written other children's books, and we put we post um, self care items and personal growth um, items and just fun things. Um, I I've just had a blast doing it, and um, it's it stayed. Um, I post every single day, and um, it just um, I've got a lot of good feedback from it, and I just hope it's supporting educators with things that. Um, they don't have the time to sit and find all of this. And um, so I, I figured that's something that I could do um, to support them. Amazing. And I'll post Denise's link uh, to her group as well. It's a lot of value. 
definitely worth joining and, and we watch her uh, workshop and the material that she had in the group. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. It was so much fun. <laughs> yes, and I can't wait until your book comes out. And you say it's August, right, when it comes out? Um, August for Women Who Shine. Um, there's 30, I'm in the book with 29 other women from around the world. And it's it's an incredible, um, and we'll, I'll keep Cassie posted in all her groups. And of course, it'll be in our groups. I have a, there's about five of us in, um, in the Educator's Edge that are in the book. So that's really exciting. So amazing. I, I can't wait. So thank you for being here. And once your book comes out, we'll reconnect and learn more about that. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Cassie. Thank you.